Hello, I like to start my speeches by saying my name is Julia and I'm a politician. Um, but uh, I think Paul has already uh, given a very, very nice and kind overview of the kind of work uh, that I've been doing in the European Parliament over the last couple of uh, months. And uh, it's a great honor for me to be able to speak uh, uh, to the Creative Commons community because really um, Creative Commons has been one of my greatest uh, assets when discussing the need for copyright reform uh, within the European Parliament. So uh, even the most conservative politicians nowadays, they have to recognize your achievements as a community and they have to recognize that Creative Commons is now uh, an established part of the way that people are sharing culture and the way that uh, uh, authors decide to license their works. So um, Creative Commons and, and your achievements as a community have been a real game changer in the way that we talk about copyright and uh, the way we talk about uh, the need for legislative reform. And this is really important because uh, the way you talk about uh, the law, uh, the frame that you use in order um, to express what the goals of copyright are supposed to be have a huge influence on what kind of reforms are actually possible. And uh, the very existence of Creative Commons and its success uh, has started to call a lot of the uh, sort of established truth that uh, we seem to all agree on around copyright into question. And um, this, is, this is what I want to uh, start with by work, uh, by, by um, going through some of these established notions. Uh, one of them that uh, I've really seen in the copyright debate for years is that idea that in general more copyright is better for the creators. Um, this misconception uh, I've come across uh, just this summer. You may have read in uh, over the summer some news stories that somehow the EU wants to ban public selfies or something like that. Uh, the, the story behind that was um, that while negotiating my report, uh, one committee of the European Parliament said that uh, the so-called freedom of panorama, the right to publish pictures of public buildings without ha having to first ask the architect, that this right should be limited. And uh, I think the reason why they proposed this was because when uh, a politician doesn't know too much about a specific copyright question, they go back to this rule of thumb that in general, more copyright is better. And when they uh, propose to limit this right uh, to, to publish pictures of buildings, what happened is that a lot of creators actually stood up and protested against this because they said, like the photographers, the documentary filmmakers, they all said, we need to be able to have these exceptions from copyright in order to be able to actually uh, depict reality and to create the works uh, that uh, we're working on. And uh, so here you can see that it's not at all true that creators are generally in favor of stronger copyright in every case. And Creative Commons is really a testimony for that. Um, so it's turning this misconception on its head that uh, it's in the interest of creators to always have more copyright. So uh, Creative Commons is a, is a global community where really uh, millions of authors um, are saying they don't want all rights reserved. They, want, they may want to have uh, recognition for their work. They may want to be able to commercially exploit their work. Uh, they may want to just spread their work as far and wide as possible without uh, any restrictions. And um, Creative Commons has been extremely successful at showing that and it's uh, on track to surpass one billion work, uh, works licensed under Creative Commons this year. And I think this is uh, a great achievement. And um, a lot of the, well, the, all the creators participating in Creative Commons, they're willing to give up some exclusive rights that they have in order to achieve their goals. So this is not uh, necessarily kind of an altruistic motive, but here you have creators who say, it's in my own best interest to leave some of the exclusive rights that the law give me and to use a more open licensing system. And uh, these millions of authors uh, involved in Creative Commons are standing up and they're saying that more copyright is not the answer. Um, what Creative Commons has also shown very nicely is that uh, something we should have known for a long time, that creation relies on a commons, that uh, when you are a creator, you are, you are never 
creating your works in a complete vacuum. And uh, a culture is always created uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. And it's almost impossible to create a work that is not, at least in some way, uh, inspired by other works that came before you. And if you restrict copyright too much, you may prevent future creation. And just uh, the way that uh, Creative Commons is being used uh, in order to create new works, I think, is something that has really changed the way that uh, we discuss copyright in political debates as well, that people recognize uh, that you have to be able to reuse the culture that already exists, at least to some extent, in order to be able not, uh, in order not to stifle our creativity. Another, uh, it's been a more recent development, but I think it's hugely important because uh, we live in, in capitalist societies for a large part, is that Creative Commons has shown that sharing can be good business, that this is not just uh, an altruistic, community-driven uh, phenomenon, but that uh, it is possible to make money without relying on exclusivity. And um, the, the traditional economic theories are really uh, grappling with this concept because their general idea is that people would never pay for something that they can get for free. And if you ever bought a, a bottle of water, uh, you know that this isn't true and that uh, the truth is a bit more nuanced. And uh, there are a lot of uh, business models that are based on Creative Commons or on open source software and all of them are, are pulling, uh, putting this uh, idea into question that uh, uh, you can't make money uh, of something that is openly licensed. And I think uh, this is really a great contribution of uh, Creative Commons to, to the economic debate we have around copyright. Uh, that sharing can be good business, and it's not just uh, um, in the cultural sector, but it's also things like uh, freemium games where uh, a very small number of people is actually paying and everybody else uh, is using something for free. And there are new business models that are not built on artificial scarcity, that actually work with the internet rather than against it, that are uh, sidestepping an ever stricter enforcement of copyright and don't go after their own customers, uh, but rather try uh, uh, to give them a good experience. And so uh, Creative Commons has really shown that exclusive rights are not necessary for economic su success. And currently there's a book being put together uh, called Made with Creative Commons that is collecting these stories. And I think this is going to be extremely useful evidence when um, talking to the more economically minded politicians, showing them that uh, there are good economic reasons for having a more flexible copyright system. And uh, finally, uh, I think Creative Commons' greatest contribution is moving towards a society of creators. That um, it's uh, proposing a license that may not be used by uh, the majority of uh, the people who have been in the creative business for a long time, but it's a license that actually works for the 99%. Uh, with, the, with the internet, everybody has somehow become affected by copyright because everybody is a creator and uh, suddenly if, if you are using the internet to just communicate about uh, the creation um, uh, that you're involved in, uh, copyright has become a subject. So uh, Creative Commons is giving some room for that, uh, for the, I think, vast majority of people who don't want to have all rights reserved. And... Um, I think there is a huge benefit for that and copyright legislators can no longer just look at a very, very small number of professional creators who would like to have ever stricter copyright enforcement and ever stricter rules. But I think there are two problems uh, with uh, Creative Commons and the policy debate. One is that uh, these positive stories about a different approach to copyright and a different approach also to making money with culture um, is uh, not heard loudly enough. And the mainstream view among politicians, most of them are quite a few years older than me, is uh, still that the more copyright creators have, the better for them, the better their economic situation is going to be, and uh, that we don't hear enough of these success stories that are built on alternatives. The other is uh, that there is a danger that the very existence of Creative Commons can also be used um, in order to say that, uh, well, Creative Commons is a sign that the system is actually working and uh, that this workaround uh, around the very strict copyright rules that you have built 
uh, is enough and we don't actually need to change the laws. And um, I think if the Creative Commons community doesn't strive to be more than just about the license um, that uh, sort of sidesteps the shortcoming of the copyright system, um, you're helping this notion that licensing can solve all the problems we have and we don't need to have any uh, legal limitations on copyright. So I think uh, um, it's very important for the community to participate in um, discussions about uh, the development of copyright policy, uh, not just where it immediately benefits uh, Creative Commons. So don't just get involved in the, in the copyright debates that might somehow threaten the way that your licenses work right now, but uh, it's important that you're involved in a broader debate um, about uh, copyright that, and showing to, to the maximalist who want stricter copyright that uh, Creative Commons is in some ways a workaround, but it doesn't mean that we don't have to reform copyright law as such. Um, the other uh, uh, issue in that regard is that um, there is a danger that Creative Commons is kind of an island of free culture in a, in a broader seed of uh, uh, automated takedowns and ever stricter enforcement, because um, I think the problem is that the vast majority of people who create have never thought about licensing. And uh, they may not even know that Creative Commons exists. And unfortunately, the current copyright system is, uh, is set up in a way that uh, says that you have uh, all rights reserved by default. And only those who have actually learned about Creative Commons even have the possibility or ever asked the question whether they want to give uh, something back to the public. So don't run the risk of, of being just this island of uh, free culture, but really go beyond uh, the Creative Commons community and try moving the policy debate in a direction where maybe someday we can have Creative Commons by default or even have free by default and only uh, have a, an all rights reserved situation for those uh, creators who really explicitly want to have this. Um, so that's quite, quite a, a, a long way to go and it's an, uh, it's an important and difficult task. And uh, I think it's really important that uh, the Creative Commons community is, uh, on the one hand, this demonstration that a lot of the underlying ideas behind the copyright system as we have it today are just not true, that creators do not want to lock up their works unless they get paid for it directly, and uh, um, that you do not need exclusivity to create value. So um, I think let's take these lessons from the Creative Commons community and really carry them into the policy debate and turn them into policy demands. So really think about what kind of changes of the copyright legislation do we need to make sure that more people can benefit from something like Creative Commons. Um, we are really far away from that goal today. I think uh, what I told you about uh, the freedom of panorama debate uh, in, in Europe really shows that. that uh, for the vast number of people who heard about this discussion, restricting the right to take uh, and publish pictures of public buildings, it, it just seems crazy to the people on the street. So um, I, I think it also shows, though, that um, uh, how far our activism uh, uh, still has to go in reaching the politicians who are making these proposals. And um, so far, I think uh, the communities like Creative Commons, but also others who are working with free culture, the Wikipedia community, have been very effective at defeating bad proposals. I'm thinking of uh, Sopa Pippa or ACTA, um, but, and also this uh, really bad proposal about freedom of panorama, but we haven't been good at creating a positive agenda for change. And this is something we really need to work on because uh, it's always easier to, uh, if you have a direct threat in front of you, to mobilize against that, but it's a lot more work to really come together and uh, agree on a set of goals that uh, we, what we want to change positively about copyright today. Um, here's what we're up against uh, uh, today. This is just uh, a share pick that uh, has been circulating in the European debate that is basically saying that copyright is uh, a guaranteeing freedom of expression and I'm violating human rights, I suppose. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that uh, while for decades the rights holders have not been on the defensive, they have always been on the offensive and uh, uh, really 
been very successful over the last decade to ever come towards stricter copyright enforcement. Today, they seem really afraid. Today, they're on the defensive. They don't want to have another copyright reform uh, because they don't think it will go in their direction. And I think this is already an uh, extremely important change that today we are at a point where, at least in Europe, the copyright legislation is so screwed up that uh, everybody agrees that if we're going to touch it, we're probably going to move for the first time in the right direction, in, in the direction of more flexibility. And I think uh, if we uh, want to grab this chance, we need to organize as a global community and really push for this reform now. Um, our voices really must become lou louder. We need to build broader alliances. So uh, a community like Creative Commons must not just focus on uh, the reforms that may be um, immediately useful or immediately harmful for Creative Commons as such, but we need to have a broader community of free culture and uh, um, to find a common agenda. Um, we need to organize the new creators, the new authors that uh, uh, I think is the vast majority of people using the internet uh, to reach their fans today. We have uh, um, video artists, uh, video bloggers on YouTube and other platforms. Uh, we have fan fiction, fan fiction writers that are um, really doing what writers have been doing for hundreds of years, that is taking stories that already exist and creating something new out of it. We have uh, people, huge communities on the internet uh, translating anime and putting subtitles in their native languages. These are also authors that uh, are on the one hand creating something new, on the other hand infringing copyright because uh, there's no, uh, um, no legal way uh, of actually um, participating in this fan culture today. There are arts and crafts communities that are selling on, on websites like Etsy that are also creators and that are not, they don't really want to deal with copyright questions for a large number. All these new authors, uh, they have a new identity and new incentives uh, for creating culture that are very, very different from uh, the, uh, the way that politicians who deal with copyright legislation think about authors. Um, and I, I don't think there is any argument about the quality of their work or the ability to make money connected to this. I think people who are using Creative Commons as opposed to the, to the uh, all rights reserved system, they are just as able to, to live off their works, they are just as good in terms of the quality of the work, but they have a completely new approach uh, to how, how to bring their arts to the people they want to reach. And I think we need to mobilize these communities and show politicians that uh, their conception of creators and what their wishes are is just completely wrong. Um, I think a lot of our problems today with copyright in the internet are rooted in the fact that uh, over a hundred years ago, we all, all our governments signed up uh, to the Berne Convention, which says that copyright has to apply automatically and there cannot be any formalities attached to that. And uh, at the time, um, this treaty was uh, initiated by an author, Victor Hugo, um, who is, you know, who actually had a point at the time. If you think about uh, a world where there is no internet, uh, it's actually relatively difficult uh, to, to think of, uh, of formalities of registration. But uh, he wasn't such a bad guy in, in, the, uh, um, in the way that he thought about copyright. Um, I just want to read a small quote uh, from from Victor Hugo uh, at the time, who said that any work of art has two authors, the people who confusingly feel something, a creator who translates these feelings, and the people again who consecrate his vision of that feeling. When one of the authors dies, the rights should totally be granted back to the other, the people. So basically, Victor Hugo did recognize that uh, culture belongs to everybody. And uh, the, the circumstances at the time were simply different. But I guess my point is, uh, if over a hundred years ago creators were able to initiate an international treaty, why shouldn't a global community of creators like Creative Commons today be able to initiate a new treaty, to uh, initiate an international treaty for users' rights that actually uh, makes sure that the reuse of culture is somehow enshrined into international law? So I think... Uh, we need to start to seriously engage in this question of international treaties and Creative Commons is probably 
uh, the best place to have this discussion and to actually start a, a, a bottom-up um, uh, call for a new treaty that is actually uh, protecting the new creators who want to share and, cre uh, and protecting the rights of the public to access to information, to freedom of expression and uh, um, to the right to education. So uh, this is really my, my core message to you that uh, we have to stop being on the defensive and only ever think about how to defeat the next bad copyright proposal. We have to be the ones pushing for a new treaty of users' rights at an international level. So what can you do today, though, apart from this kind of more long-term goal? I think uh, the most important thing to do right now is to bring the problems with copyright as it exists today into the public debate. Because uh, most people, while they may have heard of Creative Commons today, they think it's easy. They think they don't know that there are different uh, Creative Commons licenses in different countries and that uh, just setting up the system legally has been extremely complicated. So. Um, Bring the problems that you encounter with copyright legislation into the public debate, blog about them, make films about them, do theater plays about them, and keep bugging your politicians with this issue and telling them that Creative Commons may be a workaround in the current system, but everything is not fine, and we actually do need to change the laws. Um, there are a bunch of international treaties being negotiated right now. There's uh, TTIP, between uh, the US and Europe, there's uh, TPP with the uh, uh, Asia-Pacific region, and these treaties uh, in some cases uh, enforce the direction of having ever stricter copyright, so TPP will force a number of Asia-Pacific countries to uh, increase the copyright terms to 70 years after the death of the author. Uh, there are criminal sanctions against the circumvention of technological protection measures. And I think most importantly, every new treaty that we, um, that we put into place that uh, implements this general vision of stricter copyright is better, the more difficult it will be to ever change our, uh, our domestic laws in the future. So even if your country is not a signatory to uh, either of these treaties, the the results of it will affect you anyway, because uh, if you, the more countries have signed up to these kinds of treaties, the more difficult will it become to ever move in the direction of a more flexible copyright, uh, because uh, the different international treaties would just uh, limit the ability of these governments to even negotiate uh, something like a user's rights treaty. So I think uh, right now, even though uh, we have to think about a more long-term positive strategy, we also have to make sure that uh, the intellectual property uh, provisions in the TPP do not come into force. And we need to defeat this treaty to uh, ensure that we will have the possibility for a better copyright system in the future. Uh, for those of you in the European Union, but also perhaps uh, beyond, um, we are now waiting for um, the European Commission to come out with a proposal for new copyright legislation in the EU. And of course, we are sort of limited by what the international treaties allow us. But um, you can look at the positive recommendations that uh, the report that I drafted has already made in the summer, and you can say, okay, actually the majority, the vast majority of the European Parliament says we need to have new exceptions to copyright for libraries, for archives. We uh, need to give people uh, the possibility to dedicate their works into the public domain. Uh, which is something, uh, if you've ever dealt with CC0 in different countries, it's a very difficult issue. So the parliament in Europe today says people, if they want to, should be able to say, my work is public domain from day one. Uh, this uh, now needs to be heard by the European Commission. So uh, as part of the Creative Commons community, take up these good uh, demands from the European Parliament and uh, bug the European Commission about it, bug the national governments about it, and uh, uh, take the first step away from a system that is uh, all rights reserved by default. Um, we have uh, to uh, take this huge challenge of making copyright understandable to normal people. And uh, in the EU in particular, we have the problem that people are uh, 
well, they are in a situation where they have to understand 28 different national copyright laws when they are communicating across borders. And of course, with the internet, this is uh, becoming uh, more and more the default. So we have to, to uh, tell the European Commission that we need to drastically simplify the copyright system. And perhaps this would be easier achievable if we have one copyright legislation rather than 28. This would also mean that we can have one European Creative Commons license rather than 28. And um, I think uh, this is really something that we need to bring into the policy debate and where the Creative Commons community should also be uh, involved. So um, I think Creative Commons can be the global community that initiates this paradigm shift away from all rights reserved by default. And I think uh, we do need to renegotiate the Berne Convention sometime soon in order to reconcile the copyright system with uh, the internet in general. And uh, I think um, this is really a task that requires global coordination and that requires a community like Creative Commons that can actually start this discussion in a lot of different countries at the same time. So in a way, uh, it's your job to be the, no the new Victor Hugo, in a way, who is uh, uh, the creator who um, started a debate about uh, the way that we want to organize copyright on a, uh, on a, on a global level. So uh, we should not let the fact that it's been the way that it is for a hundred years discourage us. Uh, the rules that we have today were put in place by people who came before us. The world has changed and it's time to change the laws. Thank you. So we're, we're running a bit late, but I think um, we, Julia had 40 minutes, so we have uh, time for questions if people have questions. Also, there will be a session right after this one. I don't know if there's a break or not a break, um, where we can uh, uh, discuss this some further. There will be people from different, um, like different people from our community who are involved in copyright reform advocacy efforts around the world, presenting a little bit what they are doing and trying to maybe pick up on Julia's suggestion that we need to coordinate if, in order to change something. But if anybody has questions, raise your hands and I'll bring the microphone. And then I'll run back. Hi, Julia. My name is Nita. Um, I'm actually uh, interested to know more about the battle for um, freedom of panorama in the uh, Europe because um, actually the UK Copyright Designs and Patents Act um, in section 62, it has something that is regulating freedom of panorama, sort of. Are you aware about this? Yeah, uh, if I understand the legal situation in the UK correctly, um, there is a law that says that copyright holders have the right to regulate the use of their own Uh, if you're taking a picture from a private flat or if you're the Google car driving down the street with a, with a camera two meters above the ground, you're probably not covered by freedom of panorama legislation. So, uh, but I guess the good news is that we have really won this debate in the public uh, space. Even though the parliament has not yet made a recommendation to extend freedom of panorama, I'm pretty convinced that this is what's going to happen. Uh, because the European Commission needs to also gather the support of the public for their reform agenda. So I'm relatively confident that they will actually propose at least a minimum standard for freedom of, of panorama across the EU. And uh, I think uh, this could greatly benefit uh, um, all the projects that are based on Creative Commons licensing, uh, like uh, Wikipedia, for example. 
And uh, even in the countries that have no freedom of panorama at all, like Belgium or France, there are some parties now that are actually bringing this up and that are proposing to introduce it on a national level. So we have really built momentum on this point and uh, I think that we can include it in the copyright reform that is coming up and actually make sure that we have freedom of panorama in all of Europe. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, but um, you have said uh, that uh, we need to reform the Berne Convention. And actually, um, I think that the Berne Convention has become uh, more and more irrelevant uh, nowadays um, because uh, we have trips signed. Most of our countries have trips signed. So maybe what we should question is uh, trips and the nature of trips and also the nature of the uh, W2O as an organization and what they have imposed. Uh, in the final r run for countries. And that's part of the discussion of TTIP and TTP and all this stuff because they are the new generation of commercial treaties actually. So what we should question in the base is not actually the Berne Convention, which is becoming more and more irrelevant, but uh, TRIPS and, and the new generation uh, the, and the new uh, generation of commercial treaties. And in relation to that, um, I think that um, uh, if we are going to um, have a space in WIPO, uh, it shouldn't be only to discuss international treaties, but also see all the uh, work that WIPO does uh, in reaching uh, the local legislators and in reaching the local offices uh, that then train um, people and, and have uh, discussions with the people that it's implementing the policies locally. Um, I don't know what you think about this. I, I would like to know your opinion. Um, I think w one problem that we have is that, um, it's fine, thanks, <laughs> um, that w we have is that uh, different uh, combinations of countries are increasingly signing multilateral treaties or, or um, uh, plurilateral treaties and so uh, different groups of countries are bound by different uh, international treaties when it comes to, to uh, IP legislation and this is really a problem because it limits our ability to actually have a comprehensive reform on a global level. And uh, there are different elements uh, included in different uh, treaties that uh, need to be reformed. I think the, the Berne Convention is still relevant in the sense that um, it has for a very, very large number of countries put into place this no formalities idea that uh, copyright has to apply automatically. And this is something that just doesn't work if everybody's uh, um, uh, everyday communication on the internet is potentially uh, relevant for copyright. Uh, but of course there are other uh, international treaties uh, negotiated in the framework of WIPO or the WTO that have other uh, uh, really problematic elements like for example the uh, uh, ban on the circumvention of technological protection measures that uh, is also going to increasingly become a problem uh, in an age where uh, not just our computers uh, uh, can potentially have technological protections, but really everyday household devices, our cars, our pacemakers. Um, and I think that uh, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, but I guess my message is that we do have to seriously engage with the question of treaty change, and there may be more than one treaty that we do need to change in order to really have a sensible copyright system that works with the internet rather than against it. We have, uh, Alec wanted to ask something, right? Okay, then I'll give it over. Mine is a very simple one. It's uh, sort of an interim solution as we think of the big bang being proactive and everything. And what your thoughts would be if as a starting point, all of us around the world created um, a collective uh, a management organization called the Society of the Givers, the ones who want to share 
because it's acceptable within the current framework of CMOs, but these are creators who want to share, so their common interest would be that as a, as a starting point as we think of the big one. What would be your thoughts on that? Thanks. So uh, we have developments like that in Europe as well. So there's a move to create a European collecting society, uh, a cultural commons collecting society that is doing just that. I think it works. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's a great <laughs> idea in general, but I do have a concern that um, the, cr the collecting societies, we do have a lot of problems with them, but they are not necessarily the biggest problem. And sometimes uh, having two collecting societies operating in the same uh, uh, legal system means that you create a competition over the repertoire of the artists. And this creates problems as well. So uh, because it means that um, uh, you are shifting, at least in some areas where the majority of creators do not go to the collecting society directly, but rather have uh, um, given away their rights, for example, to a record label or to a publisher, um, that you put, uh, you move some of the uh, power from the collecting societies to these intermediaries if you have more than, collecting more than one collecting society operating in the same area. So in Europe we have um, this development with uh, the licensing for music that uh, in the past you needed to negotiate with 28 national collecting societies over their music repertoire. Uh, today we have uh, deals where the, f the, the three major record labels uh, have made deals with one collecting society in the EU that is now managing the rights for all of Europe. And in some cases, this ha has meant that uh, big streaming platforms like Spotify uh, only license the repertoire of, of the majors. And uh, so, uh, in a sense, this, this uh, competition between different collecting societies when you, within Europe has also contributed um, to a consolidation of the power of the majors as opposed to, to smaller record labels. So it's not that simple. I think in, uh, as an end result, we do need to have something like that. We do need um, to force collecting societies to allow creators to, uh, to use Creative Commons or uh, uh, to even release works into the public domain. But uh, we have to also take into account that there may be unintended consequences of creating a competition between different collecting societies. I haven't found a perfect uh, solution to this problem, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, one last quick question from Camille. Okay, so I'm interested if what do you think about uh, what would change uh, in using CC as an argument for a need for copyright reform if CC was just one license, because I think there's the differences between CC licenses, it's much deeper uh, between of them that it's between different open source license, and it used quite, and it worked quite well for using open source as an economic argument, but we have much deeper di uh, differences between CC licenses, so what do you think? Different national uh, no, implemented. So CC BY as opposed to NC. Or yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I think um, it has been useful uh, when discussing whether certain exceptions should be limited to non-commercial users to point uh, to the discussion around CC BY NC in the Creative Commons community. I mean, I know this is. Uh, still a controversial subject, uh, whether, what the pros and cons of non-commercial licenses are, but um, there are of course compatibility problems, like if you have one CCSA and one CCNC work and you want to combine them, you're going to break one of the two licensing conditions. So um, uh, I think uh, uh, it's useful to have this experience in order to bring it into the policy debate. Um, if you, I don't know if it's, uh, I haven't really thought about whether it would be better to just have one CC license. I think that uh, having CC0, CC BY, CC BY SA does give uh, uh, creators an easier way in because uh, I think a lot of people um, who start working with Creative Commons, they start with a relatively restrictive license because it's just, they, they're not as afraid of um, using CC BY SA and, or, or uh, NC, ND or whatever and then maybe after a while they realize that uh, they have ruled out certain uh, uses that they would actually like to encourage. So maybe I think the more restrictive CC licenses have, uh, um, have a positive uh, aspect in the sense that they allow a transition of creators who have grown up in a, 
in an all rights reserved environment to just start experimenting with open licenses. And I would hope that in the end they all end up with CC BY or CC ZERO, but I guess you can't uh, just push them into the cold water without any preparation. Okay, um, that concludes this session. Thank, let us thank Julia again who...